More than 70% of God speaking to you will be in form of impressions, signs, impulses, and signals. And this is why many Christians are confused. Because they are waiting for God to come to say, Nathaniel, my son. And then for a lifetime, they don't hear it. So they are wondering, how does God speak to people? How, why are you always saying God is speaking to you? Because they don't know that a large percentage of his speakings are motions of life. They are impulses. They are transmitted through the, the networkings of the spirit. And because they don't have a healthy relationship with God, they can't pick it. There are about seven of these signs. He touched four of them. Please, go and write those scriptures down and go and study them. And then know what each of them represent. It's very important. So let me run over it quickly. The first one he talked about was stenazo. Stenazo. It's in Mark 7, 33 to 34. Romans 8, 23. Hebrews 13, 17. James 5, 9. Stenazo. And that speaking or leading is a summon for prayer. And so anytime you begin to pick a need to pray, especially because of your insufficiency, know that Tenazo is at work. I told you my story when I went to preach in the redemption camp. I came bold. They now said God's servant was listening. Ah! I just discovered that my preparation was not enough and it was too late to go to my concordance. So I had to go to the bathroom. What happened there was tenazo. I needed more utterance. I needed more vocabulary. I needed more accuracy because my sufficiency became glaring. You know, you may be doing something where your children are. You'll be bold. They now tell you, the governor will watch it the next time you do it. You'll discover that your audience have changed. So you will need more competence. So this type of thing happens when the Holy Ghost begins to warn you, you are not prepared enough. I want to glorify you, but you are not prepared enough. So you need to build up. That's when you feel this impulse, stenazo. If you don't prepare, the platform that should announce you will disgrace you. Last month, I was to preach in Benin. And they told me, God's servant was coming, I should wait until he comes before I start. I sat in front there, and there was the governor of Edo State. There was Pastor E. E. Adeboe. There was Dr. Felix Omobude and patriarchs. You know, pa when you want to preach in such places, your doctrine will be correct. That's number one. Number two, the power of God must manifest because it's a crusade. Number three, your character will be judged because when you are talking, they can pick it. You, you may be doing like this. They will pick everything about your character from arrogance to pride. They will censor you because they know God by experience and they have been in this thing for years. So that type of crusade is not you are, you are being censored. As I sat there, every air that passed, I felt it. It was like all the, impulse, the pores of my body were open. So throughout my sitting there, I was feeling stenazo, stenazo. Pray more because you need more capacity. So I, I, Maburi bakiso peperakatua, veliso vakata. When you enter a place where you feel insufficient, don't worry, it's a sign. The Holy Ghost is telling you you need to add more stamina. But the cure is prayer. So that's why this kind of leading is a drawing to the place of prayer. The moment that insufficiency happens, it's not that you are not qualified in God. Righteousness qualifies you to stand with God, but it's telling you that you are not prepared for the occasion. So you need to build up. That's what Stenazo does. And trust me, if you don't pick these signs, many times you'll be disgraced. After you finish, you'll now come back and everything you were supposed to say, you'll now remember it when you come down. The reason is because you didn't mount up. Stenazo didn't work for you. So when Stenazo comes, it's an alarm that you didn't prepare enough. Your insufficiency will affect you. So go to prayer. It's a call to prayer. It's a summon. And you must master it. Too. I'm telling you, 
That's why I told you, if you don't know these things in theory, you are not a spiritual man. You will know. And this is why you will never fail. This is why you will never be taken on a worse. Because before you go, you will pick the sign. If you are prepared enough, you will know. If you are not prepared enough, Stenazo will activate. And then the way to manage it is by prayer. The second thing he mentioned is Embry Myomai. And you find that in John 11, 33, Mark 1, 43, Mark 14, 5. And this type of leading is a strict warning from God. Cautioning you on what you should do and what you should not do. This is why you may not have the Ten Commandments in your head. But when you have the Holy Ghost on your inside, you will walk in accuracy. Because if the Holy Ghost is alive in you, he will warn you on steps you shouldn't take. In fact, there are certain things you want to say, you will sense it as though it's a judgment. And if you have said it already, you won't have peace. That's another way God leads you from inside. It's a caution, it's a warning, it's a strict dimension of God's leading that causes a man to walk in accuracy. A man who does not have this signal, his conscience has been seared with a hot iron. If your conscience is alive, you will pick these signs many times in all your walkings, interactions, and dealings. This is why it's strange when a Christian operates without conscience. It means the Holy Ghost is not alive in his spirit. Because if the Holy Ghost is there, there is no word you say that is not checked. There is no action you take that is not checked. This dimension of God's leading is like a sensor that monitors every decision and every action you take. And if you are held in the spirit, it will be very real to you. And when you find this type of leading, it's a call to walk circumspectly. It's a call to obedience. It's a call to sensitivity. So anything you are doing, slow down. God is cautioning you. You are about to enter error. Slow down. So you may not pray when you hear this type of leading. But wait and check. Judge your actions again. Verify everything what to do and check your conscience. Is your action pure? Many times when you check, you will discover that either your action is not pure or you are about to make an error. That is why God comes like that. There are times when you want to tell your wife something. You will feel embry my mile. This thing you want to say is not a sin, but you will hurt her heart. And it is not consistent with the character of God. There are times when you want to go somewhere and play a game. You will notice movement. You are not sinning, but God is against it. If you pick this type of leading, you'll be accurate. And so the way to respond to this one may not be prayer, but it's caution. Slow down. In fact, anything you are doing, stop and examine yourself. Find out what is wrong, what am I about to do wrong, and it will be corrected. This is why these leadings are very important. The third one he mentioned is Tarasso. John 11, 33, John 5, 4 and 7, Acts 15, 24, Galatians 1, 6, 7, Mark 6, 50. And this type of leading is caution and urgency to avoid danger. The difference between embryomayo and Tarasso is that embryomayo is a caution against error. Why Tarasso is a caution against danger. So Tarasso comes with a form of fear. Why embryomayo comes with reverence. So one guides you from error, the other one guides you from danger. So you want to take a step and you feel that movement. It's also very strong. It means what you're about to enter, your faith is not enough to handle it. Somebody else can enter and his faith will bring him out. But you have not built your faith to that level. Did I tell you my story? When I was going to Oweri to preach. And there was signal. There was signal. But I said, we are generous. <laughs> and I went on the journey. Five minutes into the air plane started falling. Have you been in a plane that is falling before? May you never be there. <laughs> See, I'm telling you, I've been in a car before. The car was hit by a big vehicle. And we were spinning on the road. I told everybody, be still, all is well. There was no movement. I was gallant. 
But this time the Holy Ghost checked. Maybe I've not meditated on scriptures for a long time. Maybe my spirit was weak. And he said, don't make this journey. Don't make this journey. I heard the sound. But I went ahead. I neglected Tarasso. And when we entered the, the flight, the plane started falling. When my friend, myself and Pastor Godwin traveled last week, I saw the plane. I said, that is the plane. I know that one. And I told him, I said, the pilot is a British man. It's an old man. Check. He looked. It was the pilot. I, I know the plane. But this time, there was no fear. So we entered. We slept throughout the flight. But there was a time when Tarasso, Tarasso, I didn't respond. If you receive Tarasso, hmm, the only reason you can go ahead, eh, like he said, you must pray through. Pray until you receive a note of victory. If you don't receive a note of victory and you move, the only way you'll be saved is by the mercy of God. And trust me, if the mercy of God didn't show up that day, I would have died. Because when we landed in Oweri, I went to the pilot and said, what happened? Because I know I will preach about it. And I didn't want to come and say what is not right. The man said, I didn't know what went up over there. I mean, it's just a mess, man. It's just a mess. Well, this way. I said, you don't know why we are here. It's messy. It's not a mess. You want to enter a business, you sense danger. It's Tarasso. Don't go into that business. So the only reason you can go into that business is if you pray through and you receive a note of victory. A note of victory is a leap of God in your heart. And it brings ventilation, a sense of joy or assurance. If that thing comes, what has happened is that you have battled that matter and you have overcome. But if you don't receive a note of victory, don't go. You will die. If you don't die, then it's the mercy of God because mercy prevails over judgment. So Tarasso is a strict warning of God and urgency to you to avoid danger. Many Christians die because they don't know Tarasso. And the last thing is Parozuno. Acts 17, 16. Staring. Staring. This is the one that the evangelists like. You will find that in Acts 17, verse 16. You also find that in John chapter 5, verse 4 and 7. How many of you remember the story of the pool of Bethesda? You'll find that there. Um, let me give you one more. I want you to have many of them so that you can go and study. All right? Well, he gave you more scriptures. So that one is a, a move of the spirit in your heart that releases power for signs and wonders. There are times when you want to walk miracles because you have faith for miracles. You can work miracles. When the spirit of faith is at work, you can manifest. For example, if somebody tells me he has pain, I don't need to think. I'll just rebuke it. If you tell me you have a growth in your body, I don't need to think. I'll rebuke it. If you tell me your ear, you, are, you can't hear something, I don't need to think. I'll rebuke it. You know why? I've built my faith beyond that level. But if you come to me now and you tell me that ah, I have cancer of the skin, I don't know. I don't have faith for skin disease. I, I see them healed though. But if somebody says he has a skin problem, I don't know how to start praying. So if I'm in the public and you show up and you say, I have skin challenge. I may tell you, let's trust God. Now, there are issues that my faith has conquered. So I can use faith to deal with them. Now, you know, the Bible said in Jude verse 20, it said, building up yourself upon your most holy faith. Your faith can be at this level, the height of this microphone. But maybe because of family problem, because of lack of money, you can be operating here. So there are people who have faith like this, but they are operating here. They are quarreling with somebody, they are keeping malice, their conscience is not right, so they are here. When you pray in tongues, what happens is that your faith does not increase by prayer. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. It's only the word of God that brings faith. But when you pray, what prayer does is that it jacks you up to operate at the highest level of your faith. So if you have not prayed for a while, the things that you can deal with by faith, they will start reducing. 
because you will decline on the ladder of faith. Are you seeing that? So, if your faith is at this level, there are certain things you can always handle. So, anywhere you go to, you can handle those things by faith. And then you can also handle things by the anointing. So, when I go for a meeting sometimes, and we are worshipping, the anointing becomes strong. On the strength of that corporate anointing, I can make declarations and things happen. Because I understand the intelligence of the anointing. Now, the expectation of people can also provoke something. There are certain meetings you go for, even before you speak, the people are already high. So anything you say, their expectation will draw it. Even if the anointing on your life is small, they will empty the whole anointing and achieve result. So there are things that are, that's why as a man of God, don't live carelessly. Hide with God. If you are everywhere, the expectation on your life will reduce. They are playing basketball, you are there. They are doing food competition, you are there. Sometimes you sit with your friends. You people are wearing singlets. You are jumping. People say these people are, they are not serious people. What has happened is that expectation to receive from you have reduced. So you, you, there are many manifestations you won't see in your life again. But that's not my teaching. So you can do some things by faith. You can do some things by the anointing. But there are times when you go somewhere, your faith level is low and the anointing is also low. That's when you need this operation of the spirit. If paroxuno does not show up, you are in trouble. So what happens is that at some point, there will be a leap in your spirit. Command blind eyes, they will open. You are not the one. It's the Holy Ghost that moved on your inside. At that time, it's not your faith at work. It's not the anointing. It's a move of the spirit. So when you sense paroxuno, a need you need urgent response because if you don't respond immediately that atmosphere will close and if it closes because your faith was not enough you will talk it won't happen again that's why some people are confused you see them on the altar they say they heard god that there's somebody with cancer who will be healed and they declared but they didn't declare when the window was open because they don't know how paraduno work it's not your faith that you are spending from it's not your anointing you are spending from you are spending from an instantaneous leap of the spirit so what paroxuno does is that it requires urgent response urgent response if you respond immediately you will have the answer and this is one of the things that make many people achieve extraordinary results they can't tell you they can replicate it but they know that any time that thing happens, they will get results. All of these are intangible but undeniable perceptions of the spirit that brings victory to a Christian. And so any Christian who doesn't know the motions of the spirit cannot live a successful Christian life. And that's why I tell you here, practice the life of God. Practice it. Practice it. The things we teach you here, go and practice them. When they say people are going out for evangelism, follow them. It's not just about soul winning. There are many things you will learn in the line of duty. Some of these impulses, that's how they come. And when you are even in your business or at your workplace, be sensitive to God. Because God will use every environment to find yourself to teach you the life of the Spirit. And I can tell you, the reason 90% of Christians, if not more, struggle or fail is because they don't know these things. Now, because of what they taught, let me list five things for you. Go and study it. The benefits of being led by the Spirit of God. <laughs> Hallelujah. So, five benefits quickly of being led. Number one is comfort and assurance the moment you hear from God and you know the voice of God there is comfort and there's assurance this is one of the ways we operate especially as ministers I told you my schedule last week after ministering back to back to back my last period was in Onisha and Asaba I flew into Onisha on Friday and then I was to minister by 8 p.m. When I was going out of the hotel, that was when my second guest ran to me and started apologizing that, please, 
The meeting in Asaba is not in the morning. It's 12 midnight. There is a VG. I looked at him and said, are you sure you are ready? Because I would have cancelled it immediately. Just that the Holy Ghost constrained me and said, go. Oh! I now started asking myself, how will I preach from 8 to 10? And then come back, shower, and drive to Asaba to preach. But the Holy Ghost said, go. So I went. I said, okay, what I'll do is that when I go to the meeting in Onisha, I'll just talk briefly and escape. When I started talking, the anointing fell on me. I began to roar like a lion. I didn't know the energy came from somewhere. When I was done preaching, I was so tired. We rushed back, showered, dressed up, and we left Onisha around 11.50. Drove to Asaba. We got to the crusade ground 12.30 a.m. Immediately, they said, put one or two things together and brought me up. I was preaching. I was preaching. There, when you are talking, they just sit down and they are taking note. I labored and labored and labored and labored. When I saw that nothing was happening in the atmosphere, I told them, if you don't believe, you will not receive. But those who believe now will receive. <laughs> so I started checking my spirit. What will I do here? After a while, I heard. <sighs> On the second row there by the right hand side, there's a young lady that has an, a blood issue that is flowing non-stop. Those are paraxunos. <laughs> it's not word of knowledge, it's paraxuno. Immediately it comes, I pop. As I was talking, I moved to the left. There's somebody there with tumor on the breast. It has disappeared. When the lady rushed out and said, yes, I can't see it. That's when church woke up. <laughs> ah, is this thing real? Really? What's going on here? As the lady was shouting, they wanted to take testimony. I said, wait, oh, I'm climbing. So God is helping me with ladder. If you take testimony now and I miss the other ones, we can't gauge. So I ignored them. I started singing some song. We were praising. Praise. As we were praising God, I heard another paraxuno. Pop! And I stretched my hand. There's somebody in the middle there. You are an old woman. You can't see. Your eyes have opened. Ah! When the woman started running out. I heard another one. There's another woman there. You have a broken bone on your back. Ah. The, the place scattered. And things now began to happen on their own. But it took Paraxuno to hit that energy level. The moment I heard those things, I became assured. I became relaxed. I became comfortable. Because the king has whispered. And you know, a king doesn't need to shout. Even if he whispers, you can be banished. That's the glory and the excellency of the speakings of God. The speakings of God brings assurance and comfort. I don't know what you are going through. But before you reach your house this night, you will hear a paratuno. <laughs> My goodness. Please hear and hear where the Bible says carry with you words. You need a lot of it. Let no day pass that you don't pick signals. Train your spirit. Train it. If you don't pick any signal, you initiate prayer until signals come. That's why sometimes we pray for long. The signals are not coming, so we are inviting them. We are summoning them. Ben in the host, I say, if God does not move you, you move God. <laughs> they know some things. So the voice of God brings comfort. Isaiah 41 verse 10, fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you, I will help you, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. You hear these things, you relax. Say unto Zion, it is well with her. That's how we find comfort. See, we don't have comfort because a man promised us. We have comfort because God speaks. Romans 15, 4, he said that the things that were written before town, now, they were written for our learning so that we through patience and comfort of the scripture might have hope. So the speakings of God brings comfort. Romans 15 verse 4. Second benefit of God's leading is that it brings guidance and direction. Guidance and direction. When God speaks, you know. He said you will hear a voice behind you telling you this is not the way to go. This is not the way to go. And Pastor Godwin was speaking from John Chapter 10, verse 3 and 4. He said, he will lead you. He will lead you by his voice. 
and it will take you to find pasture. In fact, the whole of John 10 is littered with it. Verse 11, you find the same. Verse 17, you find the same. So every time God begins to speak, there's accuracy and precision. This word is too noisy. Close your eyes and stand on the road. You'll be shocked. Even the things that should give you joy will begin to bring fear. You are driving in the market. You are hearing noise everywhere. The reason you are not bothered is because you are seeing. You know everything happening. In a dark world like ours, if you don't hear God, everything is noisy. You will faint. That's why you need the voice of God. It's priceless. It brings precision and accuracy, direction to your life. Number, number three, why is the voice of God so important? And I'm saying this to help you take this message with seriousness. The voice of God brings conviction and transformation. Conviction and transformation. If you don't hear God, you won't be convinced. And if you don't hear God, you can't be transformed. Romans 12 verse 2, he said, Be not conformed, conformed to this world, but be yet transformed by the renewing of your mind. But how do you do that? We all with open faces, beholding us in a glass, the glory of the Lord. What glory is he talking about? It's the glory that comes from the voice of God. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 4 verse 4, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded from the mouth of God. It will strengthen you, build conviction in you, and transform you. When you find people who don't stand for anything in the kingdom, it's because they've not heard God. There was a time when I was struggling with sickness, and God spoke to me and said, because I live, you will see tomorrow. I became like a rock. When I tell you, nobody can kill me. I'm not afraid of this. I'm not. It's because I heard something. So it's either God speaks to you directly or you find it in his word. When you find it, it will bring conviction and it will bring transformation because the word of God transforms you. Number four, why is it important to hear the voice of God? It strengthens your faith. Romans 10, 17 says, Faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. The degree of faith you manifest is directly proportional to the volume of revelation you have. If you don't have revelation, you can't have faith. And if you don't have faith, it means you don't have word. The moment word comes, faith is born. Because when the word comes, the Bible calls the word the seed of God. It inseminates you. So that something can be born in your spirit. And the first thing the word of God gives birth to is faith. Faith cometh by hearing. Hearing by the word of God. Number five, why is the word of God important? It brings empowerment and it perfects you for excellence. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17. Every scripture is the breath of God. is the inspiration of God. It is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, in righteousness. Verse 17 said that the man of God might be complete, thoroughly furnished unto every good work. The word of God will furnish you thoroughly, thoroughly unto good works. So when you find a man who is balanced and complete, he hears something from God. And finally, what's the benefit of hearing the voice of God? It is the trigger for supernatural living. If God doesn't speak to you, and if you have not picked anything from the word of God, forget about signs and wonders. Forget about a glorious life. Mary told them, John chapter 5, chapter 2 verse 5, whatsoever he tells you to do, do. And he told them, put water in these jars. They put it. Take from it, give the governor of the feast. Water became wine. Whatsoever he tells you to do, do. He gave them five loaves and two fish. He said, take, distribute it. It doesn't make sense. There are 5,000 men here. Where do we start from? And like I was telling them in Buari yesterday, anywhere you have 5,000 men, be rest assured that you are most likely going to have 7,000 women if it's an event. And if you have 7,000 women, you are most likely to have 9,000 children. Women have one, two, three, four, if it's an event. Because no woman will leave his child at home. Even if they are not so not going to participate in the event let them eat free food at least that one will save her the stress of cooking in the evening are you following 
and then they now give you five loaves and two fish. Take, distribute from where to where. But as they were obeying and distributing, what happened? The loaves multiplied. The fish multiplied. When he speaks, signs and wonders back it up. You also, we've quoted here several times, John 11 from verse 39 to 42, roll away the stone. The moment they rolled away the stone, Lazarus comfort, even the dead, heard him and came back to life. He told Peter, launch into the deep for a great catch. Peter said, Master, we are trained fishermen. We've done this all our lives. We toyed all night. We didn't get one. He said, but at thy word, I will obey. When he did, what they caught, they couldn't bring it out. The key to the supernatural is to hear God's voice or to receive his leading. Habakkuk 3, verse 17. Let me round up there. Somebody's life is about to shift. These things you are hearing now, you may not even be seeing the result yet. Don't worry. God works on your inside before God works on your outside. God works in you before God works through you. God works with you before God works for you. So that you are not seeing result yet does not mean nothing is happening. When he told the fig tree, no man shall eat of thee, it looked as if nothing happened. The next day it dried up from the root. When God speaks, it cannot fail. Although the fig tree shall not, and it will make me to walk upon my high places. So he will transform you and prepare you for abundance. That's why now he's telling you, pray. It looks as if prayer does not produce result. He's telling you, fast. He's telling you, give. He's telling you, win souls. It looks as if all of these things are not working. Relax. Something is happening to you. When God is done refining you, then suddenly there will be a bursting forth on every side. I decree over you this evening, every word you have heard will produce result in your life. I decree and declare over you, on ground, on line, as you step out of this service, begin to walk in the supernatural. Your health is supernaturally sustained. Your relationships are supernaturally sustained. Your resources are supernaturally sustained. I decree and declare, become a wonder to your generation. The Bible said, he sent a man before them, even Joseph, whom they put in irons and locked in fetters. Is it not funny how God sends men sometimes? How can you be sent and you are sent with chains and fetters? Because it's not just about what to eat, it's about who you are becoming. He needed certain levels of trainings to become the ruler of the world. He said, until the time that his word came. So the sixth benefit of word is that he engenders deliverance. Until the time that his word came, he said the word of the Lord tried him. And then the king sent for to lose him, even the ruler of the people. He made him lord of his house, ruler of his substance. And he gave him authority to bind his princes at his pleasure and to teach his senators wisdom. I decree over you the word that will carry you to your throne. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. You didn't hear me. I said the word that will carry you to your throne. Receive it now in the name of Jesus. In the New Testament, none of us is a beggar. In the Old Testament, the Bible said they lifted the beggar from the donkey, establishes him among princes that he might inherit thrones. In the New Testament, he said he washed us and made us kings and priests unto God. We are not just being brought among princes. He has made us kings and priests. And it's not just one or two of us. It's the whole of us. The whole camp. For you are a chosen generation. A royal priesthood. God's own special people. Called forth to showcase his excellency. We are a tribe of rulers. And so I decree and declare. The least dimension you manifest. Is the dimension of a ruler. From today, walk in your dominion. From today, walk in your rulership mandate. In the name of Jesus. 
And hear me. Anything negating your glorious existence, in the next 24 hours, they go down. You know what the Bible said? He said, surely they will gather. God is not surprised. It's their job to gather. He said, but it's not with my consent. And he said, every tongue that rises against you, he didn't say God will condemn. You have the authority to condemn. And so right now in this corporate assembly, I stand to judge as a priest. Every force that has risen against you, it goes down in the next 24 hours. Although the enemy might come in as a flood, he said the spirit of God lift up a standard against them. I decree and declare a standard of God is lifted for your defense. So let it be written and so let it be established that your feet is planted in your high places. That doors open for you in places where it matters and that the Lord cause you to reign in life perpetually in the name of Jesus Christ. Somebody listening to me now, this is the word of the Lord for you. From today, the presence of your enemies are inconsequential. Because he will prepare a table for you before your enemies. Your cup will run over. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow you all the days of your life. And you shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. I declare over you from tonight, the presence of your enemies have been made null and void. Lift your hands and honor the Lord. Oh, no. Can you play in the spirit for one minute? 